I'm going to be talking about continuous integration, and my guess is that a lot of you have the same kind of story as I do. You started programming because you were interested in it, it was a hobby, maybe for your job. They said, hey, we need somebody who can figure this out. Are you interested? Slowly over time, you picked up new skills, so on and so forth. And you get to a point where you have a wide set of skills. You're doing all kinds of things. You're programming stuff. You're coding up the HTML. You may be doing some design work as well. You've got all these things going on. Well, as you start to do that, you realize there's got to be a better way for some of these things to be automated or to figure out ways to improve the whole process by which we create our programs. And continuous integration does focus largely on programmers and writing code, but there are some things that you can do with it outside of that, so keep that in mind as we go. Uh, at the end, I will take some questions, so as you're thinking about how this applies to you, those are the kinds of questions I really want to field at the end. Specific questions, how can I use this for my situation? So those are the really, the really good questions, I think, that will help everyone to uh, better understand what continuous integration is and how they can use it in their projects. But to begin, what is it not? And that's the very first thing is it's not, it's not something you install, it's not a program, it's not a, a magic bullet. There's not just one thing that says, you now have continuous integration installed, thank you. Please start continuous integration. That's not how it works at all. It's going to be much more involved than that. It's also not a goal. You can never say, I have completed continuous integration or I have fully implemented it because it's partly a process and partly something you're going to always be adapting and changing, especially as your projects change and evolve. So this is the definition uh, that I pulled from Martin Fowler, who's one of the leading people on this topic. And his definition is this. Continuous integration is a software development practice where members of a team integrate their work frequently, usually each person integrates at least daily, leading to multiple integrations per day. Each integration is verified by an automated build, including test, uh, to detect integration errors as quickly as possible. I bolded a few key words that I thought were the, the real core of what continuous integration is. Then I decided to just write a shorter version. Continuous integration is a software development process, a process where members of a team or individuals combine and build their code regularly, run automated tests, and distribute a copy of the program for testing or use. So you can see that it's much more about the way you work and integrating this with some tools that will enable some of that to be more automated and hopefully um, to produce a better piece of software. So let's talk about what happened to lead us to the point where continuous integration was uh, created. A lot of these tools existed beforehand that we'll talk about in a little bit, but there wasn't a process for which they all were used together or clearly automated together in a, in a clear process. So let's say we're back in the 90s when Java applets were the rage and people were working in small teams of five or so and they're writing in Java which is compiled, which is very different from PHP because that means there's a lot more work to actually create the program. Um, they're they're going to be working on a program that maybe deals with some bank software. Let's say one person's working on uh, customer accounts, one person's working with um, the interface between their bank and credit cards, you know, so on and so forth. So they're distributing the responsibilities. That also means that their code may conflict because they're working separately and each one has different requirements. Depending on how well they're working together and talking, they may or may not be actually sharing their, their changes and then more importantly, they might be changing the same pieces of the code that they share, causing conflicts. So eventually when, let's say, it's a six month cycle of development, five months they say, oh no, we actually need to figure out if this is working. So they'll merge and attempt to compile their code and it, it doesn't work. They go back, debug, find the compiler error, and they try again and again. And this probably went on for quite a while because it's a lot more difficult, especially in the compiling process. Finally, they get the program to run, and then they have to do further testing to make sure it actually functions the way it was intended. And eventually, they release the program. And that's just a lot more steps 
a lot of things, a lot of hassle um, into this development cycle. This process is probably pretty similar, but there's no tools behind it that actually make this smooth. So everything is done by hand. They're checking um, the commits, or they're not, uh, the, um, the compile errors by hand and trying to fix that all. After, three months after they wrote the code, that was breaking the problem. So here are the goals of what continuous integration tries to provide um, people. And there's never going to be no bugs, of course, but it's going to hopefully help reduce your bugs because you can spend more time working on the code than working on the nuances and the little details of putting your code together and compiling or whatever you might have to do. Hopefully that will help speed you up because it's going to be automated. You'll have better code management because you're going to be organizing your things in a process that you're always going to follow. Instead of doing something different every time, or maybe you don't remember how you have something set up, you'll stick to the same process. You'll have automated building, which is putting your code together in a process. If you're, like for us in Joomla, a lot of times you're going to be zipping up files to distribute a, a component or a template or any kind of extension. They're zip files. And those files come from all over inside of Joomla. They can come from administrator and the component and modules and becomes this very large zip file the bigger the extension it is. And so you can automate that until you're not actually manually going in and zipping things. Unit tests, which are something that the Joomla project has been working on, um, are writing codes, or some unit tests are essentially tracking uh, each of your methods that they're outputting what they should be. So you're going to be testing parts of your code individually. You're going to deploy your files, whether that be to people to test, to customers, to a staging server of some kind, you're going to make sure that those files are not just in your repository, but somewhere that they're actually useful. You're going to be under version control and regularly committing and updating your code that way. It's going to, as I said, improve your development workflow. And it ultimately, all of this reduces the risk of your, of your development, whether it be risk of bugs, risk of um, problems coming up with clients, not meeting their expectations, so on and so forth. These are the four, well, I've added one. There's really three, and then I kind of added deployment. But these are what I consider to be the main goals or the pillars that hold up the whole process of continuous integration. So first thing is version control, then build management, self-testing, and deployment. The nice thing about this is that you can choose which parts of this you really need. And you don't have to start by doing all of it, in fact, at the end, I'll talk about that and how to start using continuous integration. And in fact, you don't want to start trying to do everything at once. So version control is the foundation. You have to have your code under some kind of version control. Subversion, Git, Mercurial. It doesn't matter if the tool works for you. Chances are it's supported in, in some of these servers. So you want to make sure, even if you're just a single developer, you have everything under version control including all the files necessary for your continuous integration process. And as you start working, you'll see some of those. Um, so you want to make sure you are under version control as it's the core part of your code production. And then you're going to have build management, which is the actual process of zipping your files or compiling the code. And this can include all kinds of things as well besides that. But those are the core things that I'm going to explain today. But for example, I've done uh, additional tasks that I've created on my own that when the build is done, it's going to actually install a new copy of Joomla and then furthermore install that extension and open up the browser. So in two minutes, it builds the extension, builds a new copy of Joomla, installs everything, and opens the browser so that I can see it right there and logs me in. In two minutes, I have that whole process done, which is much better than me trying to do that all by hand. Um, some examples are Fing and Ant. Fing is the PHP-based tool that I use, and I'll talk about a little bit more later. Ant is also a very popular tool written in Java. I don't know Java, so I can't, uh, can't write stuff for it. But they're both controlled by XML files. That, so you don't have to know Java to use Ant, and you also don't need to know PHP to use Fing, even though I assume most of us do. Self-testing. This is the most difficult part. Hands down. This is something I'm still struggling with, and these are the unit tests 
or also Selenium tests. Um, the difference is PHP unit is an example of a unit test suite. And you're going to be writing little snippets of tests which are going to mock up, pretend uh, scenarios for your methods. It's like saying, if I give this calculation, if this method's supposed to add two numbers, so you're going to give it several examples of addition and make sure that they return the correct numbers. Obviously, you have more complex information than that, but that's the gist of it. And Selenium is a tool that actually interacts with your browser. So you can write a test to verify after you click and go through the user interface that certain things are visible on the page or certain things have happened. You could check the database if a new entry has been added after you click new and so on. Uh, like I said, it's very difficult and this is probably going to be the, the area where you all, if you aren't doing this now, you will struggle with the most and also probably start working on, the la on, on last. That's okay, but I think it's still an important part of the process. And lastly, deployment, and that's getting your files out there. It, they don't do you any good just in, you know, build it and it's sitting in this little folder somewhere. What we do is we actually put files uh, straight onto our server for download once we know that they're uh, stable. And also the Dropbox, if you've used that, or any kind of network tool. So we, we share these files via Dropbox. So everyone on our team gets them in about five minutes after it's done, it updates and you have the latest version of any of our programs. So to summarize the process, you're going to trigger this whole process one of a few ways. You either do it by committing code to the repository, which can then trigger. You can do it timer once a day, once every six hours, or you can do it manually. And there's several other ways you can configure it, but those are the three most common. And then you're going to have a server which is going to sit there and it's going to update your version control system and it's going to get the latest copy of the code. And then it's going to initiate a new build which is the zip file process. It's going to also then execute your unit tests and finally deploy those files out if everything went well. If not, it'll fail and should alert you based on whatever happened. So here is sort of the example setup that I have uh, for us. and. Uh, what sits on top of these four features is the continuous integration server. Now I said it's not a program, but this is the integration server for continuous integration process. And what it is, is sort of just the brain. It's like the controller in the MVC. Okay, it's just dictating. It's telling everybody what to do. So the server itself is pretty simple, straightforward. It just handles passing along the information to the other tools that you'll use. So Jenkins CI is an example. Um, it's actually also known as Hudson. That's what it was and now it's become Jenkins Oracle problem with uh, copyright and stuff. The Jenkins project broke away and now pretty much everyone who worked on Hudson is now in Jenkins. For version control, I suggest subversion or Git. I think subversion is a little bit easier to get started with and gets a little more powerful if you have a larger um, need for more, more people to work. F build management, I use Fing. For self-testing, PHP unit, and then for deployment, uh, various things, we actually copy it several places. So we use secure FTP and then we also copy it onto our network. Instead of doing a demo, because demos never work, I took a few screenshots. Um, this is what a configuration page for, um, for your job will look like. And jobs are in the server, you're going to set up a job which will be the process which you're going through. So you can see here what it's doing is it's going to connect to a subversion um, repository and it's going to, those are the files that are going to get downloaded into your server. And the next thing it's going to do is run this file, which is our build file for Fing. And it's very simple to read. So it's going to, the target build is what's going to execute first. It's going to zip files named, and name it joomla.zip. And the base directory is going to be code. It's just going to exclude our tests. So this is copying the Joomla, um, the Joomla trunk right now, bringing it down, taking the tests out because we don't want those, and then making an actual basically the distributing copy of Joomla at any time that you want. 
Very simple, very straightforward. Then, this is the trigger setup. It's very simple. You just say, I want it to be daily, or you can do it based on periodically, or pulling the CS CM, the, the source code management would be, it's going to pull or check for updates. Then you're going to distribute that out. In this case, we're going to publish the files to a repository, which is a website, which I have set up here. And so the whole process is set up through the CI server, but it's all of these other tools that you need to start using and integrating with that actually do the work. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you get started working with these tools, because the tools actually should come before the server. And once you've got a few of the, once you, I'd say if you have, um, if you have version control and build management down, so if you're working with SVN and you can understand Fing, you can start to coordinate those inside of your, your server. But the key thing is to start with the basics. Like I said at the beginning with the version control, start there. If you're not using it, begin with that. Um, if you're using it but you're not sure if you're using it well, then you need to start evaluating. Why is it this way? Should I be using, um, are you keeping track of a trunk? Are you using branches? Are you tagging things? Um, start to learn a little bit more about using your version control system. And like I said, put everything under control, like that build file that I showed you. Um, you'll want to start working with all these tools separately and manually. So you'll want to learn how to run and execute a build on its own. And I've installed all of these tools on Windows <laughs> because I, it can be done. It doesn't mean it's not painful, but it can be done. Um, if you want to use all of these tools, what I'm suggesting is you set up a virtual machine of Ubuntu or something like that, uh, some kind of Linux box. And what that will do is when you go to these websites, which I'll show you in just a moment, the whole list of all these tools, they pretty much just tell you how to install it on, on Linux, and it's just a few commands from, from the terminal. And so it's a lot easier to get up and running, but it may not be the platform you ultimately use it on. But anyways, that's where I would suggest starting with that. So you want to begin with version control, then work on your build. So automating how your files are zipped together. I'm, I keep saying that because I'm assuming we're all using PHP for Joomla. You can use, like I said, a virtual machine, or if you have an old computer that doesn't run so well anymore, five, six years old, it can be a really good computer to set up in the corner. You can even automate it to turn itself on once a day, run for an hour, and turn off. That's what we do. Uh, it runs, ours turns on and off a couple times each day, so it's not running all day long, but then it doesn't slow down my actual development computer. It's not just also, it's not just changing all these tools. You've got a lot of things to work with, and it takes a long time to grasp how you can use them all to your advantage. But really, it's about making sure that you're thinking more about how do I get everything automated. And it's not simple to just start doing it all. So you have to slowly change your mind. And lastly, with the unit tests, um, one suggestion, or the, the way that I think it works best, is that you start adding them as you fix bugs, as you start working on your code. Instead of saying, OK, I'm going to write a unit test for everything, because it takes a while. As you find problems or change your code, then you start to write a test for the parts you just changed, just those parts. So you slowly build your way up to what's called 100% code coverage, or you, you'll eventually write tests that test every piece of your software. But begin by writing just one, and then another, and slowly build that up. So here are those websites for Jenkins, Fing, PHP Unit, and then there's um, Jenkins, PHP, uh, which is set up by the same guy who wrote PHP unit. He has a much more in-depth setup, which includes um, code style checks and several other tools that um, are quite more advanced and very intense for PHP programming. But the, uh, the site's well worth it to look at and see what some people are doing with it. So Jenkins, Fing, PHP unit, those are great tools to be using. And then I want to open it up for questions now for what you guys are working on and questions on how you can actually use these types of processes for your own s setups. <laughs>